convention. Uh, you know, uh, our uh, organization is an umbrella uh, organization of secularist, uh, rationalist, uh, and humanistic uh, organizations in Europe. And like, sorry, and like, and like secularists, like you know, we we need a joint vocabulary, and we have no <laughs> joint vocabulary so far. One of our main tasks would be to create a political, a European. Uh, uh, joint vocabulary for our things because uh, in, in some countries where they use two languages they don't have the vocabulary from translating from one language to the other. Anyway, we want separation of church and state uh, and we are advocate, advocating equal rights for non-believers and believers. We think that freedom for everybody requires equal social dignity for everybody. And we held yesterday our annual general uh, assembly here in uh, Wrocław. And we decided to do it in Poland because it is a battleground today uh, for all uh, what we cherish most. We uh, have taken for granted for decades that there would be a more and more uh, uh, secular, democratic, liberal, and like, as they say, <laughs> Europe. And that was taken for granted until a few years ago. And unfortunately, it happens not to be always the case. The risk of falling back to dark ages is always present, as the history of the 20th century should have taught us. Unfortunately, these lessons are very seldom remembered by a lot of peoples, and I can say it because we opened the way, I'm Italian, and as we opened the way to fascism uh, in the 20s, and a lot of countries did worse than we did in uh, the first uh, half uh, of the 20th century, unfortunately we also opened the way to populism at the time of Berlusconi, and now we have a, a Berlusconi to the nth power in the, in, in the most powerful country of the world. <laughs> As, as, we, as it happened. And here, this country is obviously also a battleground for the fight for a secular Europe and for a secular democracy. So I'm very happy to uh, inform you that yesterday at this annual <coughs> conference we elected a Polish vice president, that is uh, Kaja Brex. Uh, they told me that it is They told me that the pronunciation is so simple, which is something very, very rare for a non-Pole non uh, for the Polish language. So I'm very happy uh, to give her the floor to uh, chair this meeting. Thank you very much, Kaya, and thank you very much for organizing so well our uh, annual assembly and this conference. Thank you. Welcome once again everyone here warmly on behalf of Polish Rationalist Association and Polish Humanist Association as well. And I think we are running late so there will be no speech again. Uh, and we will proceed to the panel debate that all of you are waiting for. So the first panel debate is Populism and Democracy in Europe, Challenges and Responses. And it is my pleasure to invite to this wonderful table uh, Ms. Marta Lempart from Committee for Defense of Democracy. <laughs> who is also uh, the initiator of the Polish women's strike and black protests. Uh, Mr. Gary Magnino. <laughs> CEO of International Humanist and Ethical Union uh, from Scotland. Uh, Ms. Eva Papp, an independent anti urban activist from Hungary. Uh, Mr. Metal Glivar, the president of uh, Ethos Association from Slovakia. And so 
sadly the last uh, participant could not uh, come uh, due to health reasons. Uh, so there will be four of us today and we will talk about populism and democracy in Europe. Uh, so um, it will start with a couple of questions from my side and I hope a discussion between uh, our honorable guests. And in the second part of the panel, uh, there will be a chance for all of you to ask questions. Uh, the questions can be asked in English and in Polish. I would just uh, kindly ask people who would like to ask Polish uh, to say it first. I'm going to ask in Polish to give time to everyone else to put on the headset uh, to hear the translation from Polish to English. Thank you. So, um, I will be passing on the mic. My first question to you is uh, a very general one, because uh, I think that we all feel that we... Yes, if you could please switch off the mobile phones, I would be very grateful. Um, uh, I think we all feel that we understand the term populism. Uh, and that this title is so obvious, but I'm not sure if we understand it in the same way. And also, all of you come from countries where, um, well, populist movement is present. So I would kindly ask you to take about the five minutes each uh, to say how you understand the term populism and what are the, the organizations, what are the events that happened in your country uh, that you uh, relate to populism so that you present a little bit uh, the situation in your countries and we define the topic of the debate. So let me start with Marta. Hello, it's really nice to be here, especially I met my friends from Warsaw just before. Um, thank you for inviting me. I have no academic experience or uh, very ground experience on, on the subjects we are talking about, but I have a huge experience of protesting against the government that is based on populism and, face, and, and feeds with populism. And for us, for me, it's the, it's the major role that this government uh, appeals to, to, to its, to, to its yeah, supporters. The populists say that it's okay the way you are. It's okay to hate. It's okay to discriminate against. It's okay to think that a uh, majority can decide over everything. So there are no rules about minorities. There are no rules protecting people who are minorities. We take you the way you are. That's what populists say. They say there are no values that we have to base on. There are no human values that you have to, uh, that we all agreed on. No, it's okay to hate. It's okay to do whatever you like and look at us. We are the one, only ones who, who tell you that. We are the only ones who allow to do that. Because normal governments and normal political parties and normal politicians who are not populists will always demand something. They will always demand that we have to obey some rules, that we have values that we all agreed on. Populists don't do that. Populists say, it's okay if you hate everybody. It's okay if you think that some people should be discriminated against. It's okay, we take you the way you are, you're lovely, we love you. We, we can we allow you to do whatever you want. That's why they win on these emotions. That, that's what I think. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, what I understand under the term of populism is uh, that the politician or somebody wants to give to the people that he chooses or she chooses what, what they want. And I don't think this, this is always bad, but it's certainly abused uh, many times or most times. Uh, maybe for the situation in Slovakia, uh, when it when there was the uh, high point of the migrant crisis, uh, 
uh, basically all the parties were on the same wave uh, to don't allow any migrants in Slovakia, to don't help uh, other European member, member states, maybe except for one, so uh, that was definitely a populist thing to do because nobody was asking of us to take millions of people or to even let them stay there indefinitely. They were just asking us to help them with the crisis situation. So that was a bad thing of populism. Maybe different kind is uh, there is huge coal mining operations where I come from, from my region, and there is a lot of corruption connected to this region with the coal mining. It's not effective, it's harming the environment, it's not economically feasible, there goes a lot of money from the state to this coal mining operation. And the government, of course, is saying that we need to keep putting the money into the coal mining because there is thousands of jobs connected to it. There is the other party that is taking surprisingly populist approach. They, they are not saying we should just uh, abolish this coal mining operation. They are just saying we, we will abolish it, but we will give the money that are going to the coal mining operation directly to the miners, to the people. So there goes like 3,000 euros per uh, one worker in the mine. So we will give you directly 1,000 and we will save money and we will save environment and everything will be happy. Everybody will be happy. That is also populist and I don't think this is better approach. So, yeah, populism is definitely harmful in the wrong hands, but it can be also used to put a good idea to the people, to the votes. So thank you for inviting me. But I'm very happy to be here in, in Brussels. Uh, so I think that populism is a very simple way of thinking. Uh, this is the uh, this is the promising uh, the make. America great again, or make Hungary great again, make Slovakia great again. And uh, unfortunately, in Hungary, we have now a government which is uh, used this uh, kind of uh, um, politics. So, if you will, I'm not a philosopher, uh, so I can't uh, give a definition uh, more uh, exact or more uh, dedicated for the politicians, uh, as a politician science is done, but um, so that's it. it's a very, very, very simple, um, simple way of thinking and um, just, just uh, count uh, our group. And this group can be the politicians or can be just the doctors or, or uh, minors, I don't know. Just uh, we can't, nobody else, and there is no complication around us if we will do what is good for us. I think that's it, that's the populism is. Thank you. Dzień dobry. Uh, that's all my Polish. Um, the, this is a very interesting topic, I think, and one which is very relevant across all of Europe and also in different parts of the world, I think, as well. The term populism is notoriously difficult to define and it can mean different things to different people. I think, as well, it's useful to have some historical context, recent historical context, for the collections of different populism which we see now, especially across Europe. And worth remembering that only about 10 years ago, we had one of the deepest uh, recessions, global recessions, uh, in, in living memory. And I think it's important to remember that after recessions, we often see when people feel vulnerable, dispossessed, there's a lot of unemployment. It's, it's common to see populist reactions and, and a way to try and shore up political support on the back of, of this vulnerable situation. So I think it's just useful to know that. And, and the discussions we have today, which may get quite depressing, uh, it may be useful to remember that there is a, a cyclical nature to some of these developments. In terms of trying to define populism, I think, uh, as my colleagues have said, there's an element to populism which is a quick solution. Populists often offer a very quick and easy solution to very complicated problems with 
different layers of complexity. Um, something which can appeal to people uh, who are feeling dispossessed and vulnerable. The interesting, uh, so I think populism is a form of political campaigning which puts easy solutions at the front uh, and disregards nuanced political debate, it disregards uh, the rules, the normal rules of engagement of having policies and uh, checking your facts and being able to have uh, a proper debate about ideas. Um, I've often heard of, of Donald Trump, the idea that Donald Trump uh, isn't even a liar because he has such a disregard for the normal way which we treat truth and facts that he actually is a bullshitter, someone who is so readily willing to completely ignore any baseline of facts or that, that, that we have a shared reality. Uh, this whole notion that we can have parallel different bits of reality, alternative reality, uh, is, is, is a notion which populists uh, of the right and the left have used all through the ages um, to, to try to divide people and to keep them uh, vulnerable to this type of political uh, campaigning. But the interesting question for me as well is, why do we as rationalists, like humanist free thinkers, why do we have a particular interest in populism? Uh, because populism is not only just a form of political campaigning which we can disagree with, it's also a threat to human rights, it's a threat to uh, the law-based system, the rule-based system, the international system, but I think the biggest, uh, the biggest threat for, for us as, as humanists like rationalist and so on, the biggest threat from populism is the threat to secularism, is, is the blurring of the line between the state and the church and between the, the power that private individuals can, can wield over the state institutions. Uh, and I think these are some of the important reasons why we need to, to think about populism. Thank you very much, Gary. This was actually my second question. Uh, why do we as humanists have issues with populism if it can also have a positive uh, side? Mm -hmm. So maybe the others would like to contribute uh, to this topic. Uh, could you pass the mic on? <laughs> Shall I enlarge my points? I think let the others speak first. Uh, Method, would you like to say a few words? Uh, I think the biggest issue, at least I have, and maybe my friends that are also rationalists and humanists with populism, is that, uh, as Gary said, it, it is looking at the long, long, uh, short term solutions, not, not solving the real problem, but to fix it, to quickly fix it. Uh, uh, basically, uh, in Slovakia, the governing party, the main governing party, is is ruling in a way that they are doing private polls on any issue they find I important and they do what the polls show them they should do which is that is not democracy that's like polling the tv ratings like uh, we we can see on tvs what this led to what, what is shown on normal commercial tvs when you do the polling every day because people in the short term they, they decide badly, badly. They, they choose what is good for them. Yeah, we want fun now, we want money now, but they don't think 10, 15 years from now, like, you know, like what is this giving me? It's, I'm not educating, right now I'm watching some crap on TV, so that is my issue with populism. It's, it's not looking at real issues, it's not looking at the long term, as democr representative democracy should do, it's just solving and fixing the issues on the spot. For me, the main issue is the human rights issue, as you said. It's a, populism is the biggest threat to human rights, to all the people who are uh, excluded or uh, endangered with exclusion. And the populism is based on this, uh, this thinking that when we have majority, we can do anything we like. So we just throw away everything that we already gained on, on human rights. This, this, this saving the minorities' rights approach that we always have to remember that that's, that's for me. <coughs> sorry, for me that's that's one of the biggest uh, points of democracy that we have this this decision making that 
is always and always preventing and protecting the, the minorities' rights. And it, it can be women, it can be persons with disabilities, it can be persons with lower income, anyone actually. And populism is a threat to all the people who can find themselves as a, as a minority, out of the sudden also. So they, everybody can, can be in a group that is excluded out of the sudden. And there is no way to prevent that when you have populism, a populist government, and there is no way to fight that if you don't find this, this, this populism, populism as a whole. Because there is no discussion, there is no, uh, there is no real uh, discussion with the populists about human rights. They are not interested in that. They are not interested in anything that could limit them. That's the problem, I think. Thank you. Eva? Um, maybe um, populist has a, populism has an advantage uh, to make a joke on it. Uh, as in Hungary, there is a two, Hungarian two-tailed dog, dog party who uh, launched the billboard campaign uh, let everything better, more everything, less nothing. We promise anything. Opening a Hungarian restaurant on Mars in order to improve the country's image. Starting police, this is a Hungarian kind of dog. Uh, export to Jamaica. Patching the ozone hole and um, smaller gravitation. So I just think that that's it, the, what, what politics uh, promise us and uh, people, and they like it because it's very simple, so you, you can believe it. And then at the end, if you... So that's why I think that's what I wanted to say. Just. Thank you. Uh, Gary, don't you think that populism is perhaps the true face of democracy? No. <laughs> That's an interesting point because I think part of the, the weakness in the arguments against populism is that populists use democracy uh, as a weapon to try and uh, to try and gain support for their tactics. Um, and I think it's worth noting that uh, humanists and, and rationalists and so on have a very strong tradition of supporting and promoting democracy, um, both within our organisations, the principles of democracy, because I think it's really important that we all reflect uh, on the, the idea that democracy doesn't just mean you get to vote occasionally. That's not what democracy is. Democracy has underlying principles, the principle of equality, that we all have access to a vote on the same terms, that we all can exercise our right to free speech, that we have the right to access information and debate ideas openly. Um, it also has the idea that we have access to uh, education, to be able to inform ourselves about the ideas which are happening, uh, and also the, the idea of fair play, that there should be, there should be accountability for uh, the truth, and, and, and you should be accountable for what you say. So I think democracy is much more than simply casting a vote. And it's often said in English that you know, there's a difference between democracy and mob rule, uh, and we have to put in place systems to avoid mob rule. And I think Marta said it correctly, the reason that populists are scared of human rights uh, and, and democratic institutions is because it limits them. It places limits on the power which they can wield over ordinary people. Uh, and this is what they don't like, because they don't like the idea that they can be limited. So I think democ we have to be very clear, I think, that democracy is much, much more than just simply being able to vote. It's about the way that we debate, the, the, the institutions, uh, open discourse, uh, and being able to challenge each other in a constructive way. Thank you. Would anyone, would anyone else like to answer this question as well? So I, I, I just uh, realized that, uh, for example, for our countries, democracy is uh, so difficult, and that's why populism has so advantages, because uh, before, in 1989, we didn't uh, practice really it, so we didn't have any idea how, why, how does it work. And the uh, last 20 years, I, I didn't say 27, so in last 20 years uh, in Hungary, we didn't work on it really. We just was waiting and uh, hoping the best. And
and uh, 2010, uh, as Orban, uh, second Orban government uh, goes to the power, uh, it's just uh, it's just a nightmare uh, with the populism techniques. Uh, he's working only just with it. Uh, later, maybe I will see But they are vulnerable, and and we didn't. Now, now we are no. We we know that. We have to work. There are many civil associations, organization, non-government organization, but it's a really, really very hard work. So, that's so the question was if populism is the other side of democracy. Not the true face. The true face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, no, I don't think so. I, I, I agree with Gary uh, that uh, in a democracy, if every citizen was actually citizen, not just a member of the state, the, the populists would have no sh chance to succeed because if everybody is active, participating and thinking, uh, he can be persuaded so easily by populist ideas. So, no, no, uh, as I, I was saying, the, the system when you are doing polls and basing policy on the polls every month, that, that's not democracy, that's just TV rating. So I don't think populism is true face of, the, of democracy. Okay, well, I think we all agree that we don't agree. <laughs> uh, I think uh, that's something that we should always press on and we should always say that and we should share it everywhere we can that the populism is not something normal, it's not a normal thing in democracy and it's a threat to democracy. So, uh, I don't think it's a point for a debate, really, uh, because that's how populists work, actually. They say that something that we, we would never allow in public discussion, that something would, that would be a threat to human rights or to basics of democracy, that, that are now allowed in the public debate. That's how we lower the whole system of our values and our thinking. So, no, I think of course not, populism is not a true face of democracy and populism is not a point of view that is uh, equal as any other point of view, like the democratic point of view, no, I don't know that. Well, I would be a little bit worried if you said yes, um, but I think we should also remember about those positive sides of populism, uh, the fact that it simply makes a lot of people happy, uh, because that's the true strength of it, that's why it's so powerful. Uh, so the next question is, what do you think should be our response to it? Is it enough just to criticize it? Uh, is it enough to protest? Or should we adopt some other strategies? Uh, I've, uh, I've heard some suggestions that we could also become populists in advertising the human rights and that could actually be more successful than protests. So I would like to hear your opinion on that. Um, who would like to start? <laughs> Gary, maybe? Yeah. That, that's a very interesting point, I think. Um, and there's been a lot of agreement between us, so maybe maybe on this point I can try to be slightly more controversial and we can maybe have some disagreement, which could be fun. Um, I think, uh, so let me try and frame this in a, in a deliberately uh, controversial way. Um, I think that part of the problem could be people like us. So I think if you, if you look at this room, there's a bunch of people in here who have uh, the ability, the, the resources and the time to come to an international conference on philosophical ideas. So we are part of the cultural elite. We are exactly what people like populists would, would campaign against. Uh, and, and from these discussions over the years, the, the ideas of uh, universal human rights and, and so on have emerged. And I think that part of the reason, part of the development of our culture, which has allowed the gap for populism, is the, the, dif the disconnect between different levels in society, different groups in society. And people, I think, a lot of people feel very disconnected from things like human rights. Because as, as the principles of human rights become increasingly complicated, increasingly legalistic, uh, international, 
they become farther and farther removed from the individual level uh, and, and an individual level which can make sense to people and I think that's a problem and it's a, it's a challenge for people like us to be able to communicate in a way, communicate complex ideas that deal with difficult problems in a more simple way but in a way which doesn't reduce the complexity or, or the understanding of the fact that we have a difficult problem to deal with. That's the challenge and it's not an easy one. I think there are some methods, some uh, techniques that we can learn from populists about how to communicate our message. Um, you may know in the, in the, at the moment in the UK we have an election happening uh, and what, what everybody in the UK is sick of hearing is the phrase from the Conservative government, strong and stable leadership. So every five minutes in the UK someone will pop up on TV and tell you that you must vote Conservative for strong and stable leadership. Uh, and that's part of the message discipline of being able to, to hammer the message and get a clear, consistent message. So I think we can learn from some of the techniques. What we shouldn't do is sell our ideas short. And I think that in terms of how, how we organise against populism, which I think we should do, I think there's a place for an immediate uh, visceral reaction and, and, and for part of a solidarity movement against populism. But I also think that we have to be very careful because this, is, this problem of populism, this recent emergence of populism, has been a long time coming. People have been warning us for this, about this for years. And, and, and part of it is we have to be critical of the progressive movement and the way that we have been overly, um, we've been overly prescriptive in the use of language and the, the types of ideas that we will tolerate and not tolerate, uh, and the way that we treat people who disagree with us. We have to take some, uh, some responsibility for the way that um, particularly left-wing progressives have abandoned some, some people, I think. But in terms of how we go forward, we have to recognise that this is a long-term problem. It requires strategic thought, it requires long-term political ambitions. So I think all of us should be thinking about getting involved in politics, uh, organising um, more strategically and thinking about the long-term challenges that we have because this problem is not going to go away in the next few years. You know, we've got to be looking farther and farther ahead to ways that we can be creative in our defence of human rights, international institutions, cooperation. Um, so it's not an easy, an easy fix. So basically your response would be all of us to um, become politicians. Or to campaign for politics. Matos, would you like to say a few words? Yes, uh, I don't think we, we can use populism effectively to spread complex ideas. Uh, because even if we could put the message outside and people would accept it in the short term, I don't think it it will last, because it, it's the same as with normal populism, it, it works only in short term. So if we want to spread secularism, humanism and uh, rationalism, uh, we can do it in, by simplifying the messages. Mm. I think we, we can use uh, better, better understanding of the people and communi communicating with the people. Uh, I'm actually interesting in the research that is done. I'm trying to read about uh, psychological studies and really interesting point that is kind of populist, uh, really interesting study was about how, how to convince when you, are, you have right, right wing idea someone who is left wing and vice versa and for example it is ineffective to uh, somebody who is against uh, LGBTI rights to tell them, no, we should give them equal opportunities, we should give them equal rights, because that's, that's not how they work. That's not how they're thinking. But you can convince them if you tell them, this will make our society stronger, the structure will be better, we will be stronger as a people, because that, that's how they're thinking. That's a little bit populist, but you are still t telling the truth, because it actually will do the society, will make the society better. So, society better. so we can, so we cannot stoop to populist level, but we can use better better understanding of how how the people are thinking and what that, what they want from from the life. Emma? So I think 
So my problem with populism is the, that, that they use the language very well. So they, they know the language of people and, uh, and they really can uh, say what they want to hear. And um, for example, in Hungary now, sorry that I take No, no, it's more. actually good because we time want time. you to share the experience from your country. Because, because we are living in the populism, I have to say, from seven years, so I had 35 years in socialism and 20 years like the democracy, and now it's a really hard illiberal state, so it's a illiberal democracy, I don't know what, what does it mean. And um, so, uh, no, no, uh, Few few weeks ago, uh, the right wing party uh, Jobbik launched the plaquette, uh, the billboard campaign contra Orbán government, which is uh, uh, one side there are the picture the photo of the uh, prime minister and uh, and his friend, and uh, the sign is uh, you steal, uh, they steal, and the other side a white paper. You work. That's it. And uh, what? So I was agree with it, <laughs> and it's it was clear that it's a populism, a clear populism, as it. But it was really uh, contra the government, he, 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 uh, which is lying all the time, stealing money all the time, and uh, just uh, that was Taka. So I was, uh, I, I had the fear to agree with a so populist uh, billboard, <laughs> and they are uh, everywhere in the in the town, in the country, in the country. Uh, now they changed a little bit because they, they, they uh, it's written that uh, they steal, <coughs> they steal money, and we will take back. So other side. So this is built up uh, and, uh, as a message, really aggressive maybe, or I don't know, just the populist, that uh, so they steal, but the other, the white side is, we will take back and we will spend on the health care, we will uh, spend on the education, so which is a very positive message if you take it together. So, so my problem is that uh, we have to use the language. So we have to change the language. Fidesz, the party of Orban, is change the language when they take the power in uh, 2010. So they change the uh, the word constitution, for example, uh, for the what? can you help me? Basic law. basic law, to the basic law, for example. And they, they change the constitution too, <laughs> but the, the, the name of the constitution they change too. So this is a, really as a disease, or I don't know what. And, and you, you start to use it. And uh, my problem is that when we had the change uh, socialism, when we changed socialism, uh, we, we just was thinking uh, in the same uh, um, words, in the same uh, concept. concept. Sorry, he's a Hungarian, <laughs> <laughs> and he can help me. So the same concepts, and and I think the democracy in Hungary. That's why it wasn't uh, successful, because we couldn't change our uh, our language or or thinking about the thing. We wanted that. The, we wanted the good good for the people, but uh, we were uh, just, uh, we couldn't escape from our, uh, our young, our, our history, as I say. Now, after this populist era, we are awaking, so, so we have to awake because it's not, we don't have any more 30 years to live in an illiberal state, so, so we have to do something. And that's so. So that is my problem with the populism. So that now I agree with a right-wing party, <laughs> which is yeah. which is really I, I haven't seen I, I haven't seen about it. All right. And there is a there was another ice-breaking thing in the uh, in the in the last uh, 
few months in Hungary. Later I will tell you and I will to my card. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think actually it was a very good example of uh, a topic that I also wanted to uh, discuss with you, that actually the populism strategies are used right now by a variety of political groups. So it's not just the radical right uh, that's using this kind of uh, strategies. Uh, that's why I asked where, whether we should also adopt it as it's been proven uh, very successful. But, of course, it has a lot of uh, disadvantages. So, um, Marta, would you like to share your opinion on this? Yes, because I, I think we are the ones that this, the Polish strike group is, is one of the groups that uses the, uh, the, the strategies that, that we call populists. But I, I'm not sure it's actually, actually the question to you all, because I will tell you what we are doing and, and you can decide. For us, basing on emotions or expressing our emotion, it's not uh, always populism. I, I don't agree with that. That's all, because the Polish strike, women's strike movement is also about people expressing how they feel exactly and people using language as they use it. I work in a construction company. We have managers, we have school teachers, we have single mothers. It's, it's, it's the movement that it's coalition of women. And we are not politically trained and most of us just speak the way we speak normally. So I don't think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reason or, uh, that you can define us as a, as a populist group. That's how we act, that's how we feel, and we see it works. So that's why we don't stop. When I called for the, we had this demonstration here in, in Wrocław last year, and I called for this, this Polish women's strike on, on the 3rd of October, I was also always, as always, speaking about human rights, but the main point was that this government is trying to legalize solutions that can kill us. And that's why, <coughs> sorry, and that's also why I went there. I was not a feminist activist before. I was a feminist, of course, I don't see why should I vote less, and, and I love to vote. So, of course, but I was not an activist, and there are many women like that. And that's the, that, I think that's the reason that it worked, that we didn't tame the, the anger, the language, the emotions. Was it populist? I don't know. I, I don't know how to define that. I don't think it's always wrong when you say what you think exactly. When we react to something ha happening in our government, we don't say that the Ministry of Education misses the points or this, this, this uh, announcement is misleading. We do the campaign, why do you lie so much? Why do you lie so much? It's not true what you say. That's what we do. Is it populist? I don't know. That's how we feel, that's what we think. We don't put it in this better language something because we, we don't have many journalists, we don't have writers there, so we just, just do and, and we write what we, what we think and what we say. And, and I see it works. Is it dangerous that we come close to the populist? Of course. It's all, it's, I think it might be dangerous because there are many things that make us angry. <coughs> so it's often really bad emotions that we are angry and we, are, we feel stressed and we feel helpless. So, of course, there is this danger that we become people who are basing on really bad emotions and feeding the, the whole movement with them. But still, that's how we feel now. We feel threatened and, and we express that. So, I don't think that's... that's the, but still, this is the question for you all. What do you think? It, we've been working like that since last October and it's working and we still are a massive movement and we are a movement of just people joining and, and connecting to each other. And I can tell you one thing, this is very important as we are here on this this rational conference. When we were discussing our postulates for 88th of March, the international women's strike that we, it was in 60 countries, uh, we had of course the secular state issue. And many of us, the women from big cities and from Warsaw, wanted to say, we want secular state. And the others were, no, we are talking about secular state for so long, we are so fed up with this. We want the state without superstitions. We want the state without voodoo. We want doctors who use medicine, not religion. And it came from these smaller and middle-sized cities, from these women who every day experience what we in big cities do not have to experience. So 
Should we tame that? Should we say, no, no, we cannot say about superstitions because somebody... Uh, 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 we should say secular state, no. And we did with the superstition. The postulate is state without superstitions because that's how we feel. Is it populist? Still, I don't know, but it works and we will keep doing that. Thank you very much, Marta. Actually, uh, that's why I asked you to define populism at the very beginning. <laughs> And I think none of you uh, really thought that populism is about appealing to emotions. Of course, it uses that, but the fact is that it's really hard to convey any message without appealing to any emotions, because that's what humans are. We are emotional animals, so uh, we need emotions. I think uh, the line is not about emotions, it's about the language, as Eva said. It's about whether you still see anyone outside of your group or you just start thinking about your group only, the interest of your group only, and you start distorting the reality uh, in order to you know, gain support. So that, that's how I would see the, dra uh, the line drawn, but uh, maybe the others would like to reflect on that as well. Michael? No, I think I agree. Uh, maybe some, uh, something I... I want to add, uh, I don't think that uh, people should should uh, restrain themselves when they are, are expressing uh, uh, some some concerns with government or, or some or anything. But I think uh, politicians should 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 uh, restrain themselves because they have big power in their hands. Uh, I, I really like one movie, Equilibrium. If if you don't know it, uh, please watch it. But it was a really good idea. Uh, they basically, after the Third World War, uh, made uh, a pill that makes everybody without emotions. And the idea of the movie is that, but but the ruling class basically is still enjoying the emotions. And the idea of the movie is no no ordinary people should be able to enjoy the emotions. It's the opposite. The ruling people should restrain themselves and look rationally at things. So this is this is maybe important to. To, to don't criticize, for example, ordinary people when they maybe say even something that we don't agree with, but talk to them. But if politician is using this for for his populist purposes, this is this is bad thing. Uh, and uh, other thing, uh, agreeing with uh, extremists or populists, and we have the same 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 problem in Slovakia. We have now in Parliament uh, basically neo-Nazi party, uh, and yet the, the whole campaign was we, we will stop migrants, we will lock up all the elites, and we will uh, get rid of the parasites. Under parasites, they were meaning uh, gypsies, basically or Roma. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, the, the first message was everybody is stealing. There are either the elites or the Vomas, they are stealing, they are taking you money, we will stop this. The second thing, yeah, we can agree maybe yeah, the elites are stealing or there is a lot of money in the social security, even if it's not true. But even if you agree, the next thing what you should do is look at what they provide as a solution. Because naming what is the problem is the easy part. You, you should provide the solution. That's the dis distinction between uh, some ordinary guy that is concerned with something, yeah, he can criticize it, he can use the emotion, but if you, if you want to go into politics and do something, you should provide a solution first. So it's not enough to provide the critique. And this is really spread in Slovakia. Everybody is yeah, smashing the government with, they are stealing, they are doing this bad, they are doing this wrong, but they have not, not, the, not their own agenda. Uh, and for example, something maybe a bit funny, we had a party, we still have the party, it's the strongest opposition party right now, and they, they, uh, they started as liberal party basically, but some months ago the they, uh, chair, chairman said that he, he doesn't consider himself a liberal democrat because you know, everybody in Brussels went crazy and the, the name of the party is Freedom and Solidarity. Therefore I was looking because... <laughs> so it's so it was funny. But, uh, but I have to say uh, this is one of the parties, if, if they are criticizing something, they are bringing at least some, some solutions, they are not just making the critique. 
But uh, yeah, uh, even the Liberal Party, they started as the Liberal Party, they are not any more liberal, so we don't have Liberal Party in Slovakia, for example, right now. So, and they, they turned populist. They started using populist messages basically around before the last elections, and uh, you were asking if, if, if we should use this to adopt this uh, to gain some support. Yet yeah, they, they were, before they changed the messaging, they had like around 5%, which is minimum for get, got going in the parliament. They changed the messages and they, get, they gained uh, about 10 or 12% in the election. But what, what actually happened, they gained some people that, that were agreeing on this messaging, but they lost everybody who were supporting them before. So everybody is basically the, the core voters, the liberals have abandoned them. They are looking for somebody else to vote. And they gained some maybe people that agreed with the messaging, but these people will leave for the more, more populist. So they will go to the neo-Nazi maybe in the next election because they, they slipped from uh, before it was big populist, now it was more populist, and then we will go to the stronger, stronger populist. This is maybe dangerous, so. Yeah. Uh, Gary, would you like to comment on any of those uh, opinions or? Okay, so I think uh, everyone here would like some to ask some questions, maybe. Um, just if uh, you haven't brought your translation set with you, you have? Okay, cool. Uh, so, who would like to ask a question? Uh, thank you very much. Um, it was very interesting listening to you. Uh, I go back to the first question, kind of defining populism. Uh, I believe that uh, populists they don't only kind of uh, promise simple uh, solutions to complicated answers, but the thing here is also that they, they proclaim their legitimacy from the slogan, we are the people. Eh? And this is very important, especially with the question of democracy. On the other hand, if we are here like those, those populists who, who, who believe they have the absolute truth, don't you think that's also the other approach for the anti-populists, which is often politic or technocrat, when we start to say, we have also the truth and we have only one option and one way to solve those problems. And if you don't agree with us, and if you don't see things as we do, then you are a populist, right-wing, or whatever, and then it goes uh, to the Nazi, etc. So I believe this is one of the, the problems which are self-critique. Second point is also democracy. I mean, in democracy, we, there is legitimate criticism also against democracy, because we have the people, two kind of people. If you have watched the movie uh, the Lord of the Rings, I mean, you know the hobbits. The hobbits, they are people who are not interested in politics, and they, don't, they are not well informed, they don't know anything about the world and how it's working, but still sometimes they go and they vote, and you, don't, you cannot know which party you would vote for. And you have the other ones, which are a lot, you have the hooligans. And the hooligans, they vote just for the party they think represents the truth or, or, or has the solutions, without studying that. And those, they could be the left, and they could be the liberals, they could be any, anybody. So democracy starts from the assumption that people are well-informed, that people are, are, are able to take rational decisions, when in fact it's not true. So are we here, maybe, as what I would suggest a solution, that we probably, if we consider our, ourselves enlightened enough to, 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 we should be not afraid of debate, and we should not be afraid of communicating with people, and not all the time, uh, the first argument we face the others with that you are a populist. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Kasem al from International Humanist and Ethical Union. And who would you like to respond to your question? Anyone? Maybe just the part about uh, uh, we are the people. Uh, I think this is really important. Uh, for example, the Neo-Nazi Party has taken. Uh, we are the Slovak. We are. We, 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 we are the na We are a nation. We are defining our nation. We are the only one defending it. And I really think it is important that uh, we, as humanist liberals, anything basically should 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 
reclaim this term either we are the people or we are the Slovaks, we are, we are the state. So we should show, no, you are not the, the Slovaks, we are here, we are also Slovaks, we are maybe proud to be Slovaks. I'm not nationalist, but I think this can be really effective messaging because, yeah, I, I'm not proud to be Slovak, but I, I'm not proud to be, proud to be uh, considered uh, like the neo-Nazi. So if I, have to, if I have to combat them, yeah, I will, I, I'm proud Slovak and I don't agree with you. So yeah, we are the people, no, you are not the people. I'm also a, pe uh, also a, a guy and I, I'm not with you, so you can be all the people. So we, we should show up. You are not the people, you are not the Slovak, you are not the Germans, you are not the Americans. We are also here and we will agree with you. I would reflect it for the responsibility of arguing that it's again our responsibility and your uh, sin, or our sin, sorry, our sin uh, from uh, 1989 that when we get the democracy as a gift from, I don't know, Union, <laughs> from the Union Sovietic and from the United States, or I just know from who. Uh, and we were sitting and we didn't uh, launch the program in the education, uh, the uh, debates and arguing, uh, which is in, in on the Western countries are really uh, used. And uh, that's why in Hungary, for example, there is not, not a culture, there is no culture of the arguing. So you are or enemy or friend. If you are friends, we don't have any discussion because we think the same thing. And uh, if you are, all right, if you think uh, something else, you are enemy because I, I will not accept you. Uh, and uh, the, the point was that we, that we are the people uh, used by uh, Orban in 2015 in the campaign uh, anti-immigration. Uh, we had uh, all of the country blue ball billboards uh, in Hungarian messages, <laughs> uh, can we, uh, which was to the title to the immigrants from Afghanistan and from Syria in Hungarian that if you come to our country, you have to accept, uh, respect our culture. If you come to Hungary, you can't take away our jobs. So, you, that we are people, we are saying the same the, the language, and you have to understand it. So it was really very shocking. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Marta, you also wanted to answer. Okay, so we'll make a series of three questions because I see there are a lot of ends. So just a small request, please stand up and say your name and organization, if any, first. Yes, my, my name is Marc Soignier. I'm, uh, I work for the EHF Secretariat and I'm also half Hungarian. Uh, just one, one thing that circulates in Brussels, at least in the, in the discussions in Brussels nowadays, is the expression illiberal democracy. So we all know that Orban made a speech at some point a few years ago where he actually did not use the expression illiberal democracy, he said illiberal regime. And I, I actually ex uh, like that expression much better because for me illiberal democracy is one of the most uh, dangerous expressions because it still means that Orban and all these other uh, leaders who are going in uh, the direction of this kind of regime that he's putting uh, in place are still Democrats, but from the illiberal kind. And so I, I wanted to ask you whether uh, you find that this is a, this is a problem uh, that we should try to, to address, or whether this, this is just pure rhetoric and we, we should just not bother with it. Jacek Tarwisz, Polskie Stowarzyszenie Racjonalistów. Ja tutaj chciałem zwrócić uwagę na taki dosyć... Chciałem zobaczyć, czy działa też tylko to tłumaczenie. Dobrze. Więc ja chciałem zwrócić uwagę na jeden bardzo ciekawy jeden bardzo ciekawy problem, który się pojawił w związku z narastaniem populizmu, w tym momencie głównie prawicowego, ale jest też oczywiście lewicowy populizm w Europie. Otóż no, poczuliśmy, że demokracja jest zagrożona. There is no 
Tak, tak, ale właśnie chciałem sprawdzić, czy to działa, bo jeszcze będzie potrzebne, myślę, że przecież nie wszyscy z pytających będą znali angielski, bo muszą znać angielski. Czy teraz lepiej? It's like using PowerPoint. Yes, yes. Ale ale teraz jest tłumaczenie? Czy teraz jest? Czy jest dobrze? Okay. No więc e, chciałem zwrócić uwagę na to, że przy okazji narastania populizmów w Europie, w Stanach Zjednoczonych, e, pojawiła się kwestia tego, że poczuliśmy, że musimy bronić demokrację. E, ja jestem bardzo jak, dużym zwolennikiem demokracji, ale pojawiły się też protesty. To znaczy niektórzy ludzie, również w naszym stowarzyszeniu, e, nie popierając przy okazji tych populistycznych polityków, zwróci uwagę, że demokracje są różne. Na przykład nie jest wcale prawdą twierdzenie, że demokracja nie może się opierać na tym, że większość narzuca brutalnie swoją y, wolę mniejszości. Y, mogą istnieć też demokracje, ich istnieją niestety, być może nie w naszym kręgu kulturowym, które wcale nie liczą się z prawami człowieka. I można się zastanawiać, czy od takiej demokracji nie jest lepsza jakaś monarchia, y, która liczy się bardziej y, z prawami człowieka. Dlatego no, moje pytanie jest takie, czy nie należy jednak mówić bardzo starannie i bardzo uczciwie o tej naszej walce o demokrację, że to nie jest tylko słowo demokracja, bo to wtedy jakby tworzymy pewne hasło, które też jest pewną formą populizmu, tak? Tylko, że my walczymy o demokrację, która opiera się na prawach człowieka, które też nie są doskonałe i warto by je było uzupełnić i zmienić, ale dobrze, że w ogóle są, tak? Więc trzymajmy się tego, co jest, bo mogłoby być jeszcze gorzej. I że to jest demokracja liberalna, a nie po prostu demokracja, która może polegać na narzuceniu woli większości, mniejszości. Natomiast jeśli chodzi o naszych cudownych populistów, no to oni póki co jeszcze są, mieszczą się w demokracji, natomiast no to co dzieje się, kiedy większość ma zbyt silny wpływ na mniejszość w danym państwie, to jest oczywiście zagrożenie procesu wyborczego. Tak, że w tym momencie, jeśli ta demokracja nie jest liberalna i nie opiera się na prawach mniejszości, ani prawach człowieka, e, bardzo łatwo jest e, o defraudację tej demokracji, czyli bardzo łatwo jest po prostu m, zniszczyć uczciwy tryb wyborczy, czyli można nie oddać władzy w niedemokratyczny sposób i wtedy jest koniec demokracji. No. Na szczęście jeszcze na razie tej sytuacji w Europie nigdzie chyba nie mamy, oczywiście poza Rosją i Erdoganem w Turcji. I want to make one comment and uh, ask a question, a real question. So first, uh, Kaya has said some time uh, ago, Your name and organization, Andrzej Dominiczak, Polish Humanist Association. Uh, Kaya has said that one good point about populism is that it makes people happy. Uh, perhaps it was a joke, some but I, uh, some people. I don't think it's true. It makes people unhappy. It makes people paralyzed with fear, first of all. They feed on people's fears, but those people who are so <coughs> full of fears of immigration or whatever just hope that populists will save them from this threat. So that's the comment. And the question is, uh, I'm wondering uh, whether you think, what do you think of these populist leaders in your countries, our countries? Uh, do they really believe what they say? Are they, let's say, honest populists? Is, Do they believe that uh, Orban, for example, will save or make Hungary great? Or they just say, in your opinion, what they think people would like to listen to or to hear? Uh, not with complete disregard whether it is true or not true, whether they manipulate or just... It's an interesting question I once asked about uh, Orban's attitude towards religion and our common friend, uh, Agi Kende, told me that Orban actually was irreligious uh, and now he supports religion like Duce and Mussolini. So are they talking honest populists or dishonest populists? That's the question. Thank you. Now the... <coughs>
now the answers and then the, the three more questions. So, who would like to comment on the three questions? <coughs> so maybe to the illiberal democracy. Uh, I, I don't think there, there we should accept something like illiberal democracy. Uh, it, it could, of course, exist. It could be uh, the rule of the majority in, in, a, in a basic concept, but I don't think that that's what we want. But uh, maybe, maybe sometimes the politicians are now using this term illiberal democracy because uh, people are thinking that liberal means uh, liberal, like, like progressive and stuff like this. That we should be really better at explaining to the people that liberal democracy doesn't mean that you have to be liberal all the time. I have a very bad news that uh, in Hungary the election law is changed yet. So in 2014 uh, they could uh, won, uh, they could win uh, just because they changed the, the election from two round to one round. And uh, this, or I, I can't explain you in, in not maybe not in Hungarian, but they changed yet. So it's very. Uh, we can't be sure if next year it's going to happen something good for us. I mean, for not populist. Just to the question about the populist leaders, I think uh, I think it's both. So there are some crazy people who really believe what they say. And there are some people who just use that to, to gain power and just win elections. And it's the same as well. uh, on the end, uh, we as an international community, what we can do is to support uh, so uh, civic society groups in other countries that are fighting populism. And uh, in each country, I think it's really important to demand from our, for example, from our journalists to, to demask the populists. Don't just report what they promise, what they promise. Uh, ask them what, 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 are, what, what they actually want to do. Ask them hard question. Because most times the media are passive, they are just reporting what the politician is saying. They are not asking the hard questions. And this helps the populists to get the message across without any checking, uh, without them asking it. And, I think when, when journalists does a good job, there were several examples, like with our um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Miroslav Lajčák, he was candidate for the General Secretary of the UN, really hopeful candidate, and then he went to uh, Deutsche Welle uh, discussion, I, I don't remember the name of the reporter, but, but he really hit him hard with hard questions about our government, our stance on migration and anti-Muslim rhetoric. And uh, the, the minister wasn't prepared and he really blew the election. So he was really, the, the populism of our government really, really hurt him. And it was a good thing because he, he, was, he, he didn't do anything to stop the populism. So we should demand this from, from ourselves and from our journalists to ask the hard questions and don't let just the politician, the populist, tell the, the people what they want. I'm the last one. <laughs> Um, I would just sum it up with this, uh, this great inspiration I just got from talking to Ineke, who's sitting here in the first row. We were talking about the language thing and things that I felt before uh, it just came clear to me when I was talking to you, uh, that there's, there's nothing bad. I, I, I don't agree that there's a language of politics and the language of the people. If we keep thinking that, we will never work it out. So this is the thing about politicians speaking and this this there is nothing bad and nothing wrong with politicians speaking normal language to the people and that's what populists know and we try to prevent. We, we should stop preventing that. It's not about language of politics becoming some really simplified uh, pictures something or a marketing product but it's it's all ahead of us of doing that because when I listen to this, that this language of the people is the way it is, but the language of politics should be different, and the language of the public debate should be different. I, I am the people then, and I think, no, you should speak my way, you should speak so I can understand you.
this is how it works. This is the same for me. I don't have as many women in women's movement now. I don't have diploma on feminism, on gender, on democracy. So that's why we speak how we do, and that's how we want our politicians to speak to us. Also, the way that we don't feel humiliated, the way that they, we don't feel that they are better than us because they know more. They know more, but we are the people who they talk to. So this is my appeal. We have to stop being afraid of this, using this, this simple language for complex questions and, and emotions in, in, this, in debates, in confrontations, in politics and in the political parties even, because that's, that's how populists win. So this is the thing that we can learn from them. Not about lying and not about producing fake reality, but speaking to, to us, to people, the way we speak, the way we listen, the way we can be reached. This is very important for me. Thank you.